Hello, welcome back to another episode of All The Gear Some Idea. So today we're going to be looking at the engine management system in a, in a way. I've got a code reader, I've got the adapter, I'm going to show you where the plug is uh, and the best way of checking the fault codes. Um, this had a fault, it's been fixed, it's in a different video, not delving into that bit too much because I'd like you to just watch that video and see exactly what I did in regards of fixing that. Um, trying to get as much content as possible, as quick as possible, without um, overloading everything quickly. Um, so there will be little videos coming up, um, there'll be bigger videos coming up, but we want to get into a routine of how we release the content. Um, obviously the problem we've got is we still have working jobs, uh, we still have lives, um, but we also want to be able to share content. Um, so I just thought if I just do a few little videos of just random little things like brake pads, uh, even like checking the engine management light system um, and how you read it and what you need to do it. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. Okay, so to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the key from the bike. So the key is now here. I'm going to pop this seat up so you hear the click go. After many videos where this has to come off, a bit more in-depth videos. Um, now, the scanner that I've got, you do require to have power to the scanner, which the bike does not supply the power. So there's only a three pin. Sorry, the microphone died there. So the there's no audio. So basically, the only has three plugs going, three wires going into it. You then have to plug in a live and an earth into the actual scanner. Um, so you have to remove the fuel tanks. You've got the two bolts there that I've just shown you. Um, that's fine, but I do have a separate source, which I'll show you in a bit. If you need to remove the fuel tank, there's another video on that. Right, I'm sorry if any of the audio went funny there. My mic just died for some reason. So, remove fuel tank is this Allen key down here, and the one that's just up here. Um, I need a new one of these trims. Um, I haven't looked on eBay, but I have found that they sell them on I think it's AliExpress. Like cheaper and they're brand new. Not sure the fitment would be great, but I'm willing to give it a go. There's a few other little things I want to buy on there, so we could do a little AliExpress um, haul of goodies to see how they fit, if they work, and all that jazz. Um, right, so delving into it, OBD scanner. The plug is here, so I say it's a three pin plug. I can get it off. There we go. So you've got a waterproof cap just there, and then we've got a three pin plug. Now, what I've got is this. So this is a three pin plug that goes into a generic OBD2 socket and then it also has a live and an earth. So that's why I'm saying you need to remove the fuel tank to get to the battery to be able to do it. Now to me that seems like a whole lot of pain. Just removing the fuel tank with the fuel hose and all that is just a bit annoying. So I already have a spare battery which is down there. So that's from another project we've got going on. This video's already been made, edited, ready to be uploaded. Um, but we're, like I say, we're doing it slowly. We don't want to run out of content and leave you guys not having anything for three or four weeks. So we've got loads of content in the pipeline, we've got videos done, we've got things we want to do, but it does mean that there will be projects we're getting here and we're recording and we're trying to hide them from the camera um, at that time. So like I say, just subscribe and you'll get to see the, the, what we've got coming up. Anyway, this needs to be plugged into here. So I'm going to do that now. So that's now plugged in and I've got these two wires here. Now, I don't want to read the fuel tank on this because I think it's a bit of a pain just to be able to show you guys how to read Fox. So, like I say, I've got a battery, which is, here's my bed earlier, Blue Peter style. And then what we're going to do is we're going to attach the positive to the positive plug, which is that one there. And then we attach the negative to the negative. Now, in a future video, I do mention about the OBD scanner. I do mention that there's a problem with it. So this is the one that came with it. I bought this as a kit. It was about £32. Um, brilliant for checking it yourself. So let me just get this plugged in. And here's my problem. <laughs> the scanner that they supplied doesn't turn on. Now, I'm going to have to go back and check to see what the company was called. I believe it is called ProScan, the company. But I'd need to check the packaging on that. And uh, I bought it on eBay. Like I say, I'll put a listing in there. Because... I only messaged them and said, hiya, I've just gone to use this um, scanner. It doesn't power on. I've used it on the bike, the car. I get no power. And then I use Lee Scanner, which is featured in a, another video. Um, and it, it, Lee's works with it. 
So um, I want to keep it as the listing is. So like I say, they then said, no problem. We'll send you a new one out. Uh, two days later, a new one comes through the door. So let's get that opened up now, shall we? So it is ProScan Automotive. Um, like I said, I will put a link in the description. So they have just sent me the code reader. No new wires, which is great. I didn't need the other wires. I need, just needed a code reader, which we've got here. So let me just get this plugged in and swap it out. Okay, cool. So let me just power this back up again. Cool. So as you see, ProScan came up on the screen. We've got ABD2. So we've got setup and scan. So I just need to put the key back in the ignition, turn the ignition back on. Fuel pump primed, so we know that's working good. Okay, so let's do season setup. We've got language and unit of measure. So if we go to unit of measure, we will just leave that as it is. You can do contrast and language. So there's nothing we need to do there. We're then going to do enter scan, so I'm going to press OK. It's now going to scan, see what it is. So is it can? Is it K wire? Um, not sure what this is. So anyway, as you can see now, codes found, none. So let's go recodes anyway. No code stored in the module. Decent. If you did, you'd want to read the fault code you've got. And then you can also go down to the view freeze frame. So the freeze frame, if we had a fault on there, would tell me this is what RPM it was at. What I'm going to try and do is induce a fault in there now and uh, get it to uh, pick it up, hopefully, and then you can see exactly what I mean. Okay, so I have just induced a fault into the engine, so now let's start it. The engine light is now on. So what we can now do is reread the faults and see what we've got. Now, obviously, I know what we're going to have because I've just induced the fault. Um, so it's going to go do a scan again, waiting for it to respond. So we've got one code found. Trim one is okay. So we can read codes. Oh look, we've got an O2 circuit, heater circuit, bank one sensor one. Fine. Let's go to the next one. Same fault, just a different bit at the end. So if we then go down to views free freeze frame, sorry, it's gonna go through all the list. So it's giving us the fault code, which is P0135. It's gonna say Sorry, I the page. It's going to give you the fuel system one and two and the load it was under. Obviously, I wasn't running the engine when I induced the fault, so everything's going to be saying it was not running, basically. It gives you your measured air pressure, so 49. I believe it's atmospheric. Uh, the fault happened at 1,768 RPM, so that's when I started the engine. It gives you the spark advance. I can't remember what the others are, but I'm, I'm trying my best here. <laughs> So you can go readiness as well. So that's going to be checking. So since DTC, so since the trouble, diagnostic trouble codes have been cleared, if the readiness has happened, and on this drive cycle. So on this drive cycle, so you've had no management because I haven't actually ridden it yet. Misfire monitor. Fuel system running okay. Okay. Uh, everything else is not okay, as in not applicable. So this is where you have the eight not available and then you will not applicable and then you've got the three elm so mill status off fuel and that so we go back out of that and then we go there let's check what's in this one so now the mill status is on because this is since it was last cleared oxygen sensors okay okay so what this is this is beforehand and the other one is as it is so because it can't read the oxygen sensors because I've unplugged it. So what I'm now going to do is just re-plug in the oxygen sensor. Okay, so the oxygen sensor is now unplugged back in again. So I'm just going to see what happens now. So engine light is still present because we've not cleared the codes. We come back out of that, bring that up to here. So we're going to go to number two. We're going to erase that fault code. Yep. So you should never really just be erasing fault codes because um, you want to clear the fault. Generally, you get an engine management on because something needs to be replaced. Um, so read the codes now. We should have nothing. So we've got nothing in there now. And then the engine light should now be off when I try and start it. Um, if you're having to clear a code all the time, it's generally because there's a fault with it. So this is giving me an O2 circuit sensor fault because what I've done is I'd unplugged this plug just here, which is for the O2 sensor. 
So that's then telling it, oh, we've got a circuit fault because it's not communicating with that sensor. It's not seeing, it's not getting a reading. It goes to the default value when it's not plugged in. Um, the engine ECU will just be seeing an open circuit and giving you that fault. Um, generally, I would say you'd probably find it's more likely if it's got an O2 sensor fault, it's probably an O2 sensor. Uh, however, with the following videos coming up on this bike, you will see it's not always the case. There's other problems you may have induced by other people that will be causing faults. So now we're just going to start back up again. As you can see, no engine light on there now. And the temperature gauge is flashing because it's not hot yet. So yeah, so that is how you read a fault code on the ProScan Automotive OBD2 scanner. Uh, the link will be in the description. Comes with the cable, comes with the scanner for £32. I think it's a bargain. Um, just for peace of mind. If your engine light comes on, you can see what it is before you actually take it to a garage or anything. You, you might be able to clear it if it's something that you've unplugged uh, with the ignition on. Um, so if I unplug that with the ignition on, um, and then I'll go to plug it back in again, and it won't clear until you've cleared it. So for instance, changing the engine on this bike, it would be a case that when we put everything back together, if we'd left the battery on for certain parts of it, the engine ECU would give you a fault. You need to clear it somehow. Uh, obviously we've now got the tool here to do that. So we can be checking for what faults we've got in the engine ECU. If you live close to the South Coast and you've got one of these bikes, I believe it'd probably be the same for an Aprilia RS4125 Derby. There's a number of bikes with this engine fit. If you live close to where we live, drop us a comment, drop us an email, send us a message, uh, and we'll be more than happy to, um, to lend the tool out. Come around here, we can meet you, um, and we can plug it in and, and give you the best advice possible to, to, to fix it. I mean, generally on something like this, there's, if your engine lights on, it's only going to be a number of things. It's going to be, uh, it's probably got a crank sensor. Um, won't have a cam sensor because I don't think there's any plugs at the top. Uh, regulator might give you a fault. Um, definitely land the probe. There's a number of things that would give it, but I doubt there's many things on here that would go wrong that would be detrimental with an engine light on. I think at that point you've already hit the detrimental side and it'll be a new engine like I had to do. So yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for for liking, subscribing to our subscribers we've already got. Like I say, we're trying to get as many videos out as we can to try and keep the content going. Um, just a brief overview of the OBD2 scanner um, and, and how that works. In case you've never used one before, don't feel frightened. Um, obviously, you might have to take a fuel tank off if you haven't got a spare battery like I have. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Keep an eye out if you want to have to take a fuel tank off. There is a video on that coming out soon. Um, along with a number of other things. Obviously, we've had the fuel tank off for the engine change. Uh, but yeah, keep an eye out for the videos. Hit the bell icon, follow, like, comment. We're still waiting to find out how much this bike was worth. How much do you think we paid for the bike? Um, whoever, whoever gets closest or on the mark first, there is a prize in it for you. Yeah, thanks for watching.